This past February, Marie and I joined five other photographers for a three-week photo shoot of the tribes and treasures of India, the second most populous country of the world, with over 1.2 billion people. We registered in a beautiful hotel in New Delhi and spent the next two days photographing leisurely in the city. Marie and I walked a short block to the Gandhi Santiri. This is the site of the assassination of Mahatma Gandhi, who, by means of nonviolence, defeated the British Empire. Gandhi and his followers prayed here daily. These steps lead to where a young Hindu assassinated Gandhi. Gandhi forgave his assassin as he was passing away. Outside the walls, life goes on normally in the streets. One can expect to find a snake charmer to be present where foreigners visit. The cobras are milked every morning to assure the safety of the handler. We boarded our air-conditioned bus for a four-hour drive to the annual Nagwar one-week live festival fair and photographed on the way. We stopped and we saw these monkeys seated on the wall. We didn't expect to see this happen. This is the ingenious Persian water well pulled by bullocks. Close to the highway, a girl is pumping the water well. Her mother is washing their clothes while her father watches. This herder said that they are walking 120 miles on main highways to sell his camels at the fair. On our way to the fair, we visit the family friend of our guide. The ceiling of their home is a work of art and this tidy room was carefully designed to meet their personal needs. Here the mother is demonstrating how she prepares the squash and grinds the grain. We arrived at the week-long fair and found hundreds camped out in the grounds with 1,000 camels, bullocks, and horses from several neighboring states that were brought to be sold. This will be their home for the next seven days. As is their custom, the women did the manual work. This girl is gathering animal droppings to be used as fuel while supervised by her brother, who is proudly posing in the Yul Brenner King of Siam stance. He is boastful of his authority. Camels were groomed, preparing for prospective buyers. Mm -hmm. 
It took a professional groomer two weeks to stylize his camel. Owners of other camels paid him large sums of money to groom theirs. This man was not to be outdone by the camels. Here we see prospective buyers inspecting the camels. <laughs> the two agreed on the price and the money is counted out camel owner recounted the money and found that it was short of the agreed upon price. The buyer's friend just happened to have the difference. The wealthy owner of the campsite bought 200 camels at the price of 500 US dollars each. These are some of the camels that he purchased. They are being herded into the northern region of India to be sold to farmers and landowners. The camels are not frightened by the heavy traffic and calmly follow each other. This is India's first hospital situated in Jodhpur. These cows are suffering from malnutrition, diseases, overhurt in the busy city traffic. Four hundreds are being cared for. The cows in this section have been cured thanks to the 60 veterinarians who donate their time. This beautiful cow is the first cow to be saved. We climb on the Tongas to visit the Miragaran Fort in Jodhpur. The fort built with sandstone stands 100 feet high and was built 400 feet above the skyline of Jodhpur. Foundation the fort was laid in 1459 and completed in 1640. It was built with three to nine foot wide walls and fortified with cannons, which made it impregnable. The fort was awarded the UNESCO Asia Pacific Award for Cultured Heritage Conservation. It has five palaces within the fort with intricate relief work. The walls and seatings are beautifully embellished with mirrors and gilt. It is acknowledged as one of the best preserved forts in India. This formal dining room is where the Maharaja, seated on his throne, received distinguished visitors. We enjoyed listening to a demonstration of Indian music. This good-natured honor guard is man in his post armed with his saber and hookah.
Below the fort, women dressed in their beautiful saris continue to carry out their expected physical labor. They are carrying redstone boulders to be hammered into large rocks and then pulverized to be used as mortar. We drove on to Rajasthan to see this beautiful Bawan Palace. Construction began in 1939 and completed in 1943. The palace was built by the Maharaja to provide employment for thousands of people during the Great Depression. It is one of the world's largest private residences. It has 347 rooms. A third of the palace serves as the principal residence of the Jodhpur royal family, a third as a museum and the remainder a hotel. The grounds are beautifully maintained. Dignitaries from America and other countries of the world have been honored guests of the royal family in this palace. We are pleasantly surprised to be told by our guide that the princes and she are very good friends and that arrangements were made for our group to be escorted through a portion of the royal family's residence. This is the current Maharaja. We were then taken to see the Maharani suite. It is elegant and luxurious. To book the Maharani suite, be prepared to pay 5,000 US dollars a night. Following our tour, we were taken to this beautiful setting for high tea. There is a covered charge of $60 for every person for high tea. We gave our thanks for this wonderful experience and drove to the city of Poshina to see the helical step well. We never expected to see such a magnificent well that was dedicated to the gods for the discovery of pristine water 400 feet deep. We registered at the castle of the Maharaja of Poshina. The walls of our room were covered with a beautiful mosaic and a live tree growing through the roof. We rose at dawn the next morning to photograph the ladies that sweep the cluttered streets every morning and the ladies that gather branches to be sold to merchants for firewood. We then drove to the Chalavada village to meet the region's Maharaja. We found him surrounded by little children like the Pied Piper. The background noise 
is a question of grain. The Maharaja served as our guide and took us to visit the, the farm, a very successful farmer. The women in this region are prized because they do all the farm work. Because of this, the father of the process of groom pays a dowry to the daughter's father. Grains of millet and castor beans and the major crops are grown here. Maharaja is showing the castor bean to Marie and others. It should be heavier. It's uh, not a good crop because it needs a lot of watering. This girl is demonstrating the traditional process of using the wind to help remove the loose holes from the grain. I find these drawings of interest. A thousand years from now, archaeologists will attempt to decipher the meanings of these drawings. Here are the proud parents of a newly born baby. We are told that some girls become mothers at the age of 16. Before departing, the Maharaja met the leaders of two factions to mediate a serious problem that dealt with water rights and boundary disputes. The problem was eventually resolved amiably and all returned to their respective homes. We were then taken to see a woman with her private steel that produces moonshine that's similar to what was produced in the Ozarks. She sells her alcohol openly. They, they sell them or how are they? She sells it. She sells that, okay. You want to buy some? I say this because on the other side of this wall is a district's drug and alcohol control office. We drove to the village of Chalavada to visit the sacred 1000 terracotta horse shrine. The belief is if a person with a serious problem writes a wish on the sheet of paper and places it on a horse, the problem may become resolved. If the wish is granted, the paper is burned and the horse placed with the others. After a short walk with the shrine, we came upon this large group of ladies and children seated on the ground being served a meal by men. We are told that a woman's prayer was granted and it was the obligation for the men to serve a meal to the women, her family, and their extended relatives. I asked if the men will also eat, but was told no, but men do not count. Go through 400 years down in history, it still flows at the back of the thoughts. We drove back to the city and found ourselves in a heavy traffic jam. Our driver tried a shortcut, but came to a complete standstill. We went on foot, became crushed in a wall of people. We came upon the, these marching musicians. They were escorting two 16-year-old girls who were about to become officially engaged for marriage.
Relatives and friends follow the procession. We began photographing in this busy marketplace when we saw drummers leading a procession to the temple of the mother goddess to receive blessings for her daughter's pre-marriage rituals. After a prayer in the local temple, the women performed the Garba blessing dance. We flew on to Agra to visit the Taj Mahal. We registered into our hotel and that evening attended the performance of The Dance to Overcome Evil. Mary and I spent our last day in India visiting the beautiful Taj Mahal. This magnificent mausoleum was built in the memory of the Mughal emperor's wife. It is widely recognized as a jewel of Muslim art. It is mesmerizing. <laughs>